I'll be having a, a very interesting uh, program with two young ladies where we're going to be talking about youth and uh, and in the whole purpose of it, it is to sort of understand some of the issues um, with young people today. I'm going to bring them in very shortly. Um, they're from the Miss Teen Caribbean UK, which is a pageant. And uh, it's so with, with all what is happening out there today, um, we've been talking to a lot of adults. But one of the things that we have not been hearing a lot from is the youths. Now, of course, the youths are talking to themselves and talking to their mates and, and everything like that. But somehow, well, I've not been uh, you know, really uh, you know, talking to them as much as possible. So what I said is this Friday, I'm going to have a, a special show whereby we, we get them on and we, we're going to talk to them. And I'm just waiting for one more to come on at the same time, and then we will go get cracking. And we're going to look at different issues from race. We're going to look about some of the issues regarding the statues. We're going to look at what about them? What is their solution? What do they think is the way forward? So I'm going to introduce you to the two ladies now. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. And here they are, the two contestants for um, in the Miss Teen Caribbean UK. Is that correct? Yeah. That's correct. Olivia Cassidy, good evening. How are you today? I'm good. Nanaya Malongo, how are you today? Can you hear me, Ma Nanaya? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. She can't hear me, no? Okay. I will ask her to come back around. Okay, so Nalia is gonna come back. Well, first of all, um, let me speak to Olivia. Olivia, tell me, what, tell, tell us about you. What do you study and um, and you know what is it that you study? And tell us about yourselves. Um, I'm going into college to study health and social care and sociology so I can become either a social worker or um, a nursery manager. Okay, okay. So therefore you want to be a social worker. And, um, and where are you studying? Um, Shooters Hill College. Okay, let me bring in back Nana here just to make sure that she's okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Fantastic. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have both of them here, so everything is live and direct, so we can go cracking. Um, Nanaya, tell us about you and where you, where you study. What do you study? Uh, I'm currently studying performing arts at Kingston College. Yes. And why are you guys in Miss Teen Caribbean UK? Tell us about Miss Teen Caribbean UK and why you guys are in that uh, competition at this time. Um, I joined it to boost my own confidence and because my friend is joining it, I decided that I'd join it along with her. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it'd be like a new experience to try out something new and like get out of my comfort zone. Nana, yeah? Yeah, similar reasons. I join it to like gain confidence and um, improve my public speaking skills and stuff. Yes, I, I've I've heard what Olivia said. Olivia said that she wants to be a social worker. I don't know if I missed what you said. You want to? What's your ambition to be? Um, well, I want to go into acting, prefer, mm -hmm. uh, like stage and screen acting or musical theatre. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I'm also like looking into like paramedicine and stuff. Yes, like, as a backup on the side. Are you acting now? Um, I've been doing it back in college. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. I mean, are you acting now? Are you acting now while we're talking? <laughs> are you <Yeah>. really? <laughs> um, well, I want to introduce also my colleagues on the side. James Singleton, good afternoon. How are you? Um, Charlene Capricorn, how are you? Now, ladies and ladies, you have seen um, a lot of what has been happening out there in society. Uh, Olivia, you're 15 or 16? You're 15. 16. 16. And Nana, you're 17. Yeah. Fantastic. Getting that right. Getting my parents right. You have seen what has been happening now. You have seen the whole thing with uh, George Floyd. You've seen um, the lots of demonstration. You've seen the whole thing with racism, which is happening around us now. As young people in this society, in the UK, can you give me just, before I go into specifics, into question, what would you say... Uh, what, what is it like? I mean, during the lockdown period and see what is happening, what is your thinking? What is going through your head at this time now with all of that, what is happening around you as young people? Nana, yeah, tell us first. Yeah, give us your feedback of that. Honestly, like, it's kind of like 
hard to gather my thoughts to be honest like around the whole situation like um i just find like like kind of find the whole situation kind of overwhelming mm. like i don't know it just like hurts me kind of inside that like people would still like do stuff like that in this yeah. age and and also for olivia i put that question to you um well with me i've always mm-hmm. spoke about racism within my own friendship group and like always been raising awareness for any attacks that's been going on obviously there's been multiple attacks on black people within police brutality before george floyd and i've always raised awareness for that on my instagram so like having it go bigger means like it like raising awareness for so just little things can also help because obviously nobody would be paying attention if they weren't paying attention to the other people mm. At, but like it's it's kind of overwhelming because as I'm in lockdown I can't go to the protests because like it would put my mum in danger but yes. it also has helped me because I'm within the same household it's helped me see my family's views because we don't really talk about racism or anything like that so when I see how my family feels on this type of thing. Like, it gives me a chance to get to know them better as well. Young black teenagers growing up in the UK in these uncertain times as it is, have you ever, and you can go whichever one first, have you ever experienced racism? Yes. Can um, you, yeah, sorry, yeah. Like, in school, um, we've had a racist teacher or two racist teachers, but only one got caught. Um, she would she said the N word in the middle of a class, really? and the the whole class was like, "You can't say that." And then she said, "Well, it's just a word." And then um, she said it next to our head of year at the time, and she said, "Oh, I was just saying it. It's just a word." And then said it again. She got fired. But the other teacher that didn't get caught. Um, in my school, we have a one way system. You can go down yeah. one corridor this way and then round but you can't go back on yourself so because we, we were most of my class don't go through the one-way system because it's just a hallway um so everyone was going through the one-way system and she stopped the last three black people yes um and said all of you need to go back and then my like the friend at the time was like oh it's racism as a joke as like most people do and she goes, oh, she's being racist. She's always got to stop the black people. And she stopped the, all three of them and said, all of you are in detention. You guys are going to be treated differently, so deal with it. Um, yeah. And it was reported and nothing happened. You, you know, they say sometimes racism is very subjective. It is how you feel. How yeah. did it make you feel as a person? Like, when you're in school, you think that you're going to be in, like, a safe space. Like, oh, school's supposed to be there for you no matter what your sexuality whatever your race is whatever your religion is like school should always be a safe place so when you're reporting it to a teacher like you're told to your whole life like oh you have to report it to an adult you have to report it to a teacher you have to report it to someone above you and it'll get Mm. sorted out when it gets reported and it's allowed it's kind of like like you can't do anything like you're just it just makes you feel a bit worthless yes yes and it makes you angry Okay, okay. And and for Nanaya, what about yourself? Um, well, I haven't really experienced anything like more like direct, so to speak, but like I've like experienced stuff like more like subtle, like stuff like um told that like maybe I wouldn't like achieve a certain grade or maybe like um like I'll get followed around shops, like like pestered and stuff. Like not pestered but like continuously ask like if uh, I'm okay if I'm looking for something in particular stuff like that okay I want to ask you this question um and it's, it's a direct question and it's very maybe a bit confrontational when you saw the image in the United States of America well everybody has seen the image well well actually I should ask because many people sometimes say they don't want to see it. Did, did you both saw the image of George Floyd and the police um knee on his neck yeah you both saw that yes um what 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 were you thinking when you when you saw that and the whole demonstration just want to zero in on to that for and also at the same time when i'm asking that question your interaction with your friends in your peer groups 
Um, how did that go? Nanaya, give us a feedback that period of time when you saw that and what is happening and the discussions you have with your peers. Um, well, when I saw it, like, initially, it was just really, like, sickening to see because, like, I feel like he really did know what he was doing. Yes. And, like, it just, like, I don't know. It's like I felt it. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, like, it's like I felt mm-hmm. it, kind of. And um, with regards to, like, my friends and my peers and stuff, um, like, I didn't really, like, talk much, like, to, like, people until, like, a couple weeks later, like, a couple days later. And some people, like, checked up on me, like, which I'm really grateful for. But, mm. yeah. And, and I put that to you also, Olivia. Um, well, within my friendship group, like... It, it kind of wasn't a shock to anyone that that would happen in America because mm. it, their pr- police brutality is obviously worse than here, but yeah. here still has a problem. Um, so when it happened, it was, like, very unsettling. And when it got traction, it, like, it was, like, a good thing. But I did end up losing a lot of friends because, um, obviously, with George Floyd, he had a criminal past, but he mm. had one criminal record like one thing on his criminal record which was mm. aggravated battery or ag- aggravated um robbery i think yeah. yeah and people i my close friends um were screenshotting this post going around saying oh well he held a gun to a pregnant woman he yeah. was a drug dealer he did this and this and it's all on his criminal record and i was like well if all of that was on his criminal record he would still be in prison and it wouldn't be like a he was definitely innocent. It would have been like, oh well, he did this and this and this, and that's what the police would have said. Mm. But when you got and I asked for people to give me like their evidence other than an actual post that they were just spreading around, and no one could do it. So I ended up arguing with a lot of people, saying, oh well, he's a bad person when actually he wasn't. He tried to change his life around and then got killed. Right. So therefore, it is not justifiable, even if he had any any wrong thing which he has yeah. done in the past. It is just not justifiable. Yeah. It, it, it is very interesting. And uh, it, it is so crucial that, um, you know, everybody, and, and as you can see with the, the demonstration, it was a lot of young people. I, I always ask this question. <clears throat> I want to ask you this, and, and, and uh, it's not on the sort of pre-discussion that we have. Do you think young people are the conscience of a nation. Young people are conscience of a nation whereby they sometimes, because they're not so much um, influenced so much in their early years, they're sometimes on the right side of history. I I put that back to you. They should be like what the nation are looking for. Like they should be looking and saying, what do the younger people want? What do they want for their future? But yeah. most young people are overlooked because they're young people. Because we, we're we all glued to our phones, which is something mm. we all hear very often. But because of it, it then makes us stupid. Like mm. that we don't know anything. So when we have a political opinion, it's like, oh, well, you're too young to understand politics. Mm. Um. And then when you have like a, like, like a formed opinion with facts and data, it's like, oh, well, you're so glued to your phone, you'll believe anything you read. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I, young people going to protests and creating these types of things like, and having a sense of community is very good because like, it shows older people that we do know what we're talking about and we are yes. trying to raise awareness. But we are very much overlooked. No, no, I see you shaking your head. You come in there. Let me hear your views on that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, as, as she said, um, I think, like, they should be, but a lot of the time, like, um, not a lot of adults, like, take us seriously, or, like, they'll just say, like, well, we, like, we don't really know what we're talking about, like, we don't really have the experience or whatever to, like, have, like, a proper opinion and stuff like that. Well, I, well, I want to let you know right now that the only reason why I have you on the show is because I want to take you very serious and I'm taking you very serious. And the reason why, and as you can see, Charlene, the Capricorn, I'm, you know, lovely young ladies, Kima Allen, welcome you the best. Um, James Singleton, welcome ladies, you know. Um, and he's asking a question, actually. Here's a question. Let me let me put this question, which is, uh, I haven't read it because I have on my glasses. 
Here's a question before you even get started. Can it seriously be considered anything less than respectful for England rugby fans to adopt a song with my black slaves on the two black players? Or is it white confusion about BLM gone mad? Do you want to answer that? <laughs> He's putting that to you because he, he values you. He, see, he, he just went straight in, um, this gentleman here. He knows it is young ladies, but he's asking this question. Here's a question before you even get started. Can it seriously be considered anything less than respectful for England rugby fans to adopt a song written by black slaves to honor two black players? Or is it white confusion about BLM, Black Lives Matter's gone mad? Who I, want to take <laughs> I feel like some of the stuff that we read into, like rugby songs, like I just, I feel like, no one's ever sat there and gone, well, you're racist for singing that. Or, you know, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. but at the same time, like, I guess it's good that people are questioning every single thing that people are doing. Like, why are we still upholding this or upholding that? So I guess, like, if rugby people want to change the song they sing or mm. if they want to keep the song they sing, as long as they're educated about the song that they're singing and yes. whether they feel comfortable with it, then... But that's just my opinion. What's your opinion, um, Nanaya? Um, well, I feel like it's okay, like as long as they like know what's like what it's really about, like what's the history behind it, basically. Um, like I don't really mind because I guess they're like trying to acknowledge like that part of history, I guess. Mm. But um. I feel like as long as they know, like, they know, like, the history, they've researched, like, the history behind the song and stuff, it's okay. Okay. Now, I want to ask you this question. I'm going to black history because a lot of this is around black history. This says um, a man needs to know his roots before he can even go forward in life. And and, uh, and there's a saying, I believe, by Marcus Garvey. It slipped me, but anyway, you, you might even know it. History. Do you know much about black history? I'm going to ask you that point blank question uh, you know do you guys know much about black history um in this country uh not in this country particularly because that's not what i was taught yes um, but a lot of like like most students in my my current secondary school um they don't know a lot about black history we were learning uh we had to relearn um about rosa parks and about martin luther king in mm arrest for like a quick um it was something to do with politics on like a, yes. an exam question and we were learning about it and then my teacher goes okay so all of you you know martin luther king and all of a sudden half the class goes i have no idea who that is mm. and i sat there and i was like you guys are all 15 or 16 you've gone through primary school and the whole of secondary school and you've never heard of martin luther king wow. and i I got really confused. I was like, how did, like, was none of you taught anything in Black History Month in primary school? Because yeah. by primary school, it, I knew about Martin Luther King. I knew about Malcolm X. I knew about um, Rosa Parks. And we were taught a lot of stuff about Black History Month. And like to hear like so many people be like, I have no idea who that is. I have no idea about any of this. Why would I even know to know about the Black Civil Rights Movement? I was like... Why wouldn't you know about any of this? Like, it's really, like, but a lot of, I had to teach a lot about myself, like, black LGBT people. Like, you have to teach yourself a lot about black people because the, most schools don't want to concentrate on black people, with, especially with our history with black people here. Because, like, I never heard about Windrush. Never in my mm. life in school, never told any of that. My nan told me that. Yes. My my aunts told me that. Like, I had to go to my family members to hear all about it. You'd never hear about that in school. Right. And if I put that to Nanaya as well, do you, what, what do you know about uh, Black history? What, did you find it yourself or was it through school or, or families or what? Um, well, I would say, like, I learned most of my Black history, like, through, like, family. But I'm not really, like, I don't really know much about, like, Black history, like, in the UK, like, with regards to the UK of, except for, like, probably the, the Windrush thing and, um, yeah, like, Windrush, I think, and, like, post-war stuff or, like, the war stuff. Um, but I'm, like, I don't really know much about the UK. Um, mm. 
But this this is very interesting and, and this is eye opening. And 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 the, the 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 phrase which I wanted to come up earlier, James Singleton reminded me of it, is that a people that doesn't know its history is like a tree without its roots. So do you believe then the quest for black history to be taught in school is a, a right approach, which everyone has been talking about for a long time yes. to hold black history out? But it, it has to be like I know all of I can tell you anything about American black history. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why I know so much, but like I can tell you that like about people brown versus cool, where she had to go mm. in and argue about getting schools integrated. Like I can yeah. tell you so much about American black civil rights movement because wow. obviously it happened there. Like it was yeah. there and it it spread everywhere. But for I like I I don't know anything about England. Uh, like we need to be taught about the empire and how it was bad for slaves. We need to be taught about Windrush and about how even though they were integrated into our society, the BBC still weren't hiring them as actors to be in their shows. They were still showing white schools in yeah. white areas. Like they weren't integrating black people or any like any minorities even after black people have been living here for over ten years. Can I ask you this question? And this is a controversial one. And to Nanaya, have you seen the teaching of Chinese history in school? No. Have you seen the teaching of Indian history in school, Asian history? No. So the only history that you, you really come to you is about the empire. The empire yeah. in America. And... and, and but but also, um, Olivia, you, you're talking a lot about America as well. You know a lot about America, but yeah. Windrush. I mean, you, you guys might know about Windrush because of the recent fiasco, and it's been in the news, and it's in your face, isn't it? Is that all yeah. you remember? Yeah. So so so, why I said Asian history, Chinese history, Indian history is not. A, who do you think has the responsibility to teach you about Black history? The school, parents, family, communities. Everyone. Let's make it specific. Uh, you know, you say everyone. Uh, Nalea, who do you think has the responsibility ultimately? Is it the school? Is it um, parents, family? I feel like it should come from your family, but I also feel like the school should have like some responsibility in like teaching the students now like about their like roots basically, because like a lot of people are, like, they don't really know that much and they don't really know like how they got from point A to point B and I feel like it's really important to know about your history to know like a lot about like what you want to do in the future like what you want to be in the future like your future life because I, I, I tell you why I'm, I'm approaching this question in a way because in recent days you have seen whereby the tearing down of the statues in Bristol yes and that has been on the, on the face of the, the news. And, uh, and recently, Cecil Rhodes, um, statue in Oxford, is now man mandated to come down based on decision. Do you see, like, lots, with, with, with the whole thing which is happening, do you see, like, history is confronting in your face and you are now uh, have to sort of get in to know more? These statues are there with slave masters. You might be looking at it and say, wow, not knowing that person actually used to take slaves from Africa, throw them in the water, rape them, brutalize them, and so like that, and make it lot of... How, how do you feel about that? Is, is it that history is confronting you now? I feel like, like it's... History's always been there. and yeah. it, it. But now that people are saying, well, you've just made a statue and you've glorified them, yeah. but you, you've decided to glorify them for doing this one thing and not raise awareness for the others. Like... And people argue that taking down the statues is erasing history. But I feel like it does the opposite because you argue, you're saying, oh, take down these statues because they've done this and this and this. And then people are paying attention. They're seeing, hey, the, that statue that's been there for this many years. years yeah. Now, I, like the whole time they've actually been doing in their history, they did this. Like, it's not erasing history, it's bringing awareness to history and not allowing people to be glorified even because they were awful people who did awful things. No, no, I, I put that to you as well. Just all so speak about is history. Um, and, and based on what Nana said, I, I sort of rephrase my question to based on what Olivia said. I rephrase it to say, 
history is always there. We know that history is a fact. But they say that the victors sometimes teach us their history as to how they see. Like for argument's sake, for black people, history normally, if you're not careful, can be start 400 years ago when slavery started. But no one is teaching us that there's been a history of black people before the 400 years. So therefore, it is who teaches the history is the, normally is the victor. I ask you this question, with these statues coming down and with the wall Cecil Rhodes and the demonstration emanating from the fire which has started with um, Floyd, George Floyd, is history, is it compelling you to learn more? Yeah, um, like now that I've seen like these statues, well, I didn't really know that the statue existed before like it was taken down. But now that I've like seen the statue taken down, now that I've heard like the stuff, heard the stuff in the news and stuff like that, um, I found it more like I was more like motivated to like learn more about like who these people were and like what my history was, but before the slavery, before like everything that I was taught, like. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you this question now. Both of you answer this: yes or no. Should these statues go or stay? And the reason why they should go or they should stay? Because well, some people are saying that keeping the statues there is somewhat like a, a reminder or a teachable moment to show what happened. And if you remove them, it actually takes it out of your face that people are not knowledgeable. Or, or some say, put it in a, in a, in a what you call it, a museum. What do you think? Should the statues go? Should Churchill statues go? Should Margaret Thatcher go? Should Nelson Mandela go? People are now saying, take Nelson Mandela uh, statue away as well. Where does it stop? What do you guys think? I think some of them should stay and some of them should go. Like, I, I don't think that, like, I can say all the statues should go because, like, people are obviously going to disagree or agree or whatever. Yes. But um, with, like, statues being removed of, like, prominent slave traders really rich wealthy men who were slave traders and then they've got a statue up and it's like a little plaque and mm. it's like saying that oh well they made this river that's that and then saying oh well you taking down that statue is erasing the history of him being a slave trader but it doesn't raise awareness for him being a slave trader at all so yeah. taking down the statue is a good thing because you're glorifying him to be Amazing. Taking down the Churchill statue is because he almost committed war crimes. He wanted to just kill a bunch of people and his cabinet had to stop him. He mm. made racist comments against Indian people. Um, and taking down Margaret Thatcher, I totally agree with. I 100% <laughs> agree with. I've, if I could have a least favourite Prime Minister I wasn't even alive for, it would be her. She well, made let, awful yeah. choices. Yeah. And she shouldn't be glorified at all. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, you're hearing from the mouth of babes. Actually, I don't mean babe, but I mean young, <laughs> young, young ladies. You know, um, and that's why I said it's very important that that they are listened to because they're actually coming out with some serious stuff. And where is it coming from? You know, I want to put that to you, Nana, as well. Um, should they stay or should they go? And why? I feel like some of them should go down because, like, the ones that like are about like people who like did like inhumane things because like you shouldn't really glorify people for doing like morally wrong things like they mm. should be like praised for it like obviously they're not really like praised like to their face but like they shouldn't be like praised and like for it but then some of the stuff like some of those statues of people who like did good things like they should stay because obviously like they did good things to like help shape the world in a positive way instead of a negative way. So, but, so, what you're, so what you're saying as well is like uh, statues like the Mary C. Cole, people are doing great things. More statues should be coming up as well, um, as well and be created. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there has been another thing in the news because I've just seen the news being overflowed by um, different things. And I just want to pick your, your mind on this. And, uh, and this is it. The Bank of England is actually saying they're sorry for their part in the role of slavery, okay? And they're gonna be looking to get rid of some of the governors, you know, these old governors, their pictures and their artifacts. They're gonna remove them. And um, two other 
two other banks, I think, is Green King and Lodge of London, apologize over slavery links and pledge payments to black and minority groups. What do you think about that? I mean, you know, everybody's now coming and, and they're putting money. What do you think? Where do you think this money should go? Which they're saying, let's, they want to compensate for their act in the past. Where do you think this money should go? Charities. Charities. Yeah, like people, not like just random charities that support black people, but like yeah. charities that do things for black people, like helping them change their life around after prison, yeah. because obviously you have charities for that. And um, charities that like help pe black people with mental health. Yes. Like things like that, because a lot of black people struggle in those areas because of stereotypes mm. that have been put on them by family and by other people. Um, I think those that's where it should be going. And like small companies, because black people are disposition, say if they're in a, a mainly white area. Yes. Like, and they're trying to set up their own business. When you when you're trying to do that, there's going to be a stigma, especially if you're middle class. Like middle yeah. class black people, are they're gonna they're gonna get black supporters, but they also need like financial aid in case like something goes wrong. Like it just you just need a kind of like pillow, as most white people have. Like they have like something. Most white people get an e easier life, privilege, but you, obviously you can't get that through money. But yeah. money would be a good place to start. And Nana, yeah, same to you. I feel like it should go towards like rebuilding the communities or building up the communities, the black communities, mm. um, uh, like re like building up um, black businesses, making sure they're more like prevalent to like the majority of the people, the population, um, like helping people like spe like specific people like charities or like specific groups of people who like yeah. are at a disadvantage looks things like that okay so therefore what we're talking about is those money should be targeted towards um black and minority or some key different areas as well i want to i, I want to wrap up soon and just want to put this last question to you guys as, as a way forward i put this to you nana uh, if you're in the government and if you're like the prime minister, and there will be black prime ministers and Asian prime ministers in the UK. I always say to people all the while, especially young people, um, don't feel like this country is not yours to claim, because you're born here, okay? So let nobody say this is not this is not home. Treat it as home, because guess what? Most people are not leaving here. Treat, I always say to people as well that when you go into parliament, I'm into politics, and I, I, when you pop into parliament and you see a lot of young people walking around in Porkillas House or Westminster, um, the palace, they're researchers. And they're researchers, they're like interns. And what they're doing, they're, they're doing research for the parliamentarians, the MPs. So when MPs come up sometime with policies, it is lots of research is done by young people coming out of university or doing an intern. And so it's very crucial and important that young people play their part and, and feel a part of the system. And that's my encouragement to you. But if you were the prime minister, and if you're a part of the government, what would you do to somewhat deal with this whole issue of harmonizing this country with the whole racial thing which you see happening now? What would you do? Um, I'd put some plans into place to like make sure like everyone gets an equal opportunity to like like be the best person that they can be. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like that's what's lacking in this country. Like there's not a lot of like uplifting of everyone which like it's really like sad to see so i feel like i would like like put creating my... policies like creating policies you like be creating policies to make sure that happens yeah 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 anything else um that's okay. From the top of my head. That's all right. If you can jump, you can jump in after. And Olivia, if you're in that same position there where you're finding yourself in this key position where you can actually make changes in dealing with all racial harmonization, because it's a fact and it's a reality that it is a big problem. There's a split, there's a divide. How would you bring it together? Um, well, first thing I would definitely do is schools. Yeah. School, like, because children are taught in school and they take those that information and those values that you're taught and you put them into your own life. Like mm -hmm. not even, 
actively like subconsciously you'd do it like I'd work with the school board or whoever makes whatever goes on in school I'd work with them and I'd say we need more black like history put in the truth about what happened during the empire with the slaves yeah the statistics dates whatever like it all needs to be in there real people real things everything and we can't just like cut it all out Mm. and not even just black people any other minorities that we're purposely leaving out to make ourselves seem better yeah and then i'd definitely go for like just working closer to for black minorities like more policies put in for policing so racist people can't get away with anything right like there needs to be more of a consequence for being racist accountability they got to be accountable for the action yeah yeah and and if i'm to ask you this last question now i keep saying last because more is coming to me because i'm getting a bit i'm just starting to start up now getting relaxed with you guys now that was just a start but i'm not going to keep you too longer do you see obstacles to your success in the uk as a person do you know your identity as an individual as a black woman uh, do you believe racism can block you or stop you from where you want to go? Nana, yeah. Um, I really do think that like racism has like an impact on like like where like your future's heading basically. And I, I, I'm I'm, foc- I'm focusing specifically on you as, as your mindset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, because like if like we're not given the like right foundations how are we supposed to, like, build ourselves up and, Mm. like, have a good future and, like, be successful as people? So I feel like, yeah, racism is, like, holding us back because, like, we're not really getting, like, the chances to be great, like, to be what we should be. We should be able to be, to be honest. Okay. Olivia? Personally, um, I'm fairly light-skinned. I'm very Mm. light-skinned. Um... And that gives me a privilege that most black people don't have. Because if I straighten my hair or if I wear a wig, I could be possibly white passing. Mm-hmm. And that gives me like um, a bit further than what most people, like I, I'm around. It gives me an advantage. But like from my mind, like from seeing my friends, like I know that there is a block. Because even my cousin who... Yeah. She's beyond smart. She's my age and she got into a sixth form college Mm -hmm. um, last year. So she got into college two years early and was working on her GCSEs and she knows where she wants to be in life. But her her class teacher called her the N-word in the middle of the class, Mm -hmm. sent her out. She couldn't attend certain lessons anymore. And she had to take to social media to actually get justice for what happened to her in the middle of class. Like, if you're being blocked in school by teachers, you're never going to be able to get anywhere in life because you know you're not being treated the same. So you don't want to be, like, respecting a teacher. You don't want to listen to a teacher that doesn't have a single bit of respect for you. So you're ending up losing your education. Yes, yes, yes. That's where you're coming from. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, well, what I can say is this. Um, you've got this t- talent, talent pageant coming up very soon. And... Uh, and when is that going to be? You know when that's going to be? I believe we have a winner by August. Is you have a winner by August. Okay. Yeah. So, so one of you guys is going to be a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be, I'll be having uh, another two, uh, which will be coming on next week, um, courtesy of Miss Teen Cabby in UK, um, which is Sherry Camilla, um, was organised this. And I want to say it, it's a, a real honour um, speaking to these young ladies as well, because I believe uh, they're the future. And... Uh, they're going to be taking care of us in the future as well. And therefore, and one of the things which they said is sometimes they are pushed aside because they are young. But I remember there's a scripture in the Bible, I believe it's in Job or so, when they said, you have the age, but there's a wisdom also that comes from God that actually flows through an individual. And therefore, one should not shun away the youths from speaking because they speak wisdom and they can see things. I've seen different things like um, Tiananmen Square when they had the different demonstrations around the world. It's always some sometime by youths. When I see all the different prime ministers in Jamaica, Michael Manley, PJ Pan, they all were youths. 
everybody were youths. Boris Johnson, um, um, David Cameron, they all at Eton, they all were youths when they were formulating their mindset and everything. So therefore, let's watch the space because there's a song in La Miserable and it says, I don't know if you guys watch La Miserable and it says, be careful how you go because little people no. grow, right? And that's a powerful thing. Be careful how you go because little people grow and they always remember, right? Um, now, where you where you hail from, Olivia? What's your country that you're from? Is in Caribbean, UK? Montserrat. Montserrat. Oh, fantastic. What do you know about Montserrat? Um, Say Montserrat. Say Montserrat to us. We all want to go to Montserrat. <laughs> it's called the Emerald Isle. And um, in I know some of the slavery past. Ireland um, owned Montserrat people. Yes. And after it, they actually still maintained a close relationship. Mm. So Montserrat like to celebrate St. Patrick's Day and do a parade and they like to wear their traditional dresses and do yeah. all types of festivities. And also the re the, the volcano which Yeah, the, the eruption. Because I think a colleague was here, Kema Allen. She's also from Monster Retro Display. She's here. They were actually on my show last night, Kema and Keisha Allen, they're from Monster. And Nanaya, you hail from where? Jamaica. <laughs> You're born here. Yeah. You know, can, can I give you a little joke? There's a little joke that goes around sometimes. When people say, where are you from? I say, I'm from St. Thomas. A lot of people say they're from St. Thomas. I said, hang on a second. Are you from St. Thomas or you were born in St. Thomas Hospital in Westminster? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's a good joke. Tell us tell us about Jamaica now and you represent. Sell Jamaica to us. <laughs> well, I know that there's a lot of like nice specific festivities around august time like independence time there's a huge yeah. like independence gala which i was so um happy to experience in real life last year yes um like different times of the year there's like so much like lovely things to see there's so much lovely things to like get involved in yes and um, and the food and water bob marley everything <laughs> yeah Reggae music. All right. Well, listen, guys, I want to thank you so much for coming on. And ladies and gentlemen on the side on um, or watching, show them your love. You know, give them the thumbs up or whatever like that. And you guys can go back and see the comments later. Give, give them some words of wisdom and some words of encouragement as well and encourage them for them to be what they want to be. Before I go, any last words, ladies? Uh, thank you for listening to me talk. Thank you. And Nanaya? Yeah. Um... Like, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my views. And, Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. And your views are welcome. And thank you to Sharika, um, Alicia Miller as well. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And uh, this will be shared on YouTube. And uh, look out for the next show, which is going to be next week, Friday. Um, tomorrow night, I, I may be having Itana, a singer from Jamaica. Or it may be a, a telethon, which is being done with, uh, which I'm going to interview someone talking about... Um, DJ DJ Khaled and Bounty Killer being a man, some big teleton which they have in Jamaica. So we're going to be talking about that for the event which is happening on Sunday with Nathaniel Pete as well. So thank you very much. Have a good night. All the best and may God bless you.